What is up everyone, Knixis here, and welcome back to Shining Song, Star Nova. And as you remember last time, we got to look more into Aki's troubled past as she met with Oda on the set of one of her jobs, and he was trying to recruit her. Scary times, but producer Sar came just in time to say, fuck off, you old coot. And Aki passed out while trying to practice, and we let her stay over our house. We found out that she's a precious little bean. Anyways, her mom... Mm, not sure about her, but she 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 gave the producer the look like I knew you fucked my daughter, and it's like I didn't do nothing to your daughter. Leave me alone. <laughs> but I don't know. With this central music going on, I can only imagine some risque stuff is gonna happen, and right in the beginning of the episode. So let's get it over with. The sun once again came down after a long day of work. Ah, I was so tired. As a matter of fact, everyone was dead tired. This was the first time we've been, uh, ever worked like this. It was like we were preparing for a war. And in many ways, we were. Quasar, an enemy who had to defeat no matter what the cost. With the competition this close between Quasar and Star Nova, it wasn't too much of a, an exaggeration to say that we really were at war here. A knock on the door interrupted my thoughts. Huh? Did Naki come back from her jobs? But she never knocked on the door like that. Come in. I had- Oh, 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 that's what's gonna happen, huh? I had a feeling! I had a feeling! I had the sickest feeling I was about to say. This woman about to come in here and try to fuck me, isn't she? I have a feeling Miss Kashiwagi gonna come around and try to get some producer. Oh, hell no! Uh, ah, uh, producer-san. Kashiwagi-san, how rare to see you here. I suppose so. So this is the office where Aki works every day. It's a pretty small office, but we are all grown accustomed to it, so it's been hard to move to a bigger location. Is that so? Let me brew you some tea. Is there something you wish to discuss about Aki-chan? Ah, regarding that... <clears throat> the Skashiwaki, uh, countenance change. Can it truly be done? Can the Kashiwagi Aki be made into an idol? Kashiwagi-san, as I said earlier... That girl really doesn't understand, you know, what it takes. <laughs> yeah, just the dots like, well, what do you mean? I placed a tray of teacups on the table and took a seat in front of her on the sofa. Being an idol certainly is a difficult job. It is a job unlike most others in that both risk and payoffs are unbelievable. However, from my experience with working with Aki-chan, she already seems to have a good understanding of the difficulties of being an idol. Well, she is experienced, at least, but, you know, she breaks at the last moment. She knows the right words to say and can work hard, but I fear she lacks the grit to truly become a star idol. Whenever she's confronted with a difficult situation, her usual determination just crumbles. Uh, she really, uh, she really still is a child. For a moment, the setting sun bleached my vision red. Kashiwagi's face got washed away in the twilight and was replaced with Aki's. Um. Oh. <laughs> Listen here, producer. Enough with your talks. I'm in this to become famous. I don't need sweet talks or pats on the ass from you. I ain't some frail flower who's just gonna wither away because, oh la la, being an idol is so heart trending. I only care about the results, okay? Do whatever the hell needs to be done. Just make me into an idol. And yeah, Naki's fierce, calculating, two-faced idol personality had been an act. An act to make herself worthy in the eyes of her mother. And perhaps worthy in Aki's own eyes as well. Every girl will have doubts on this path. Did something happened to Aki to make her this way? <sighs> it was around four years ago, back when she was still signed on with Golden Calf. She had been selected for the center of Strawberry Pink by Oda-san. It seemed like her popularity was really booming, you know. After all the pain and suffering we went through to get her that far, it seemed like Aki's hard work would finally pay off. But then the pressure just began to great for her. Aki, who was such a cheerful, precious little girl before, suddenly lost her voice just when her fame was about to take off. Now that she was in the big league, she couldn't handle it. She ran away. I see. That must have caused you and her, producer, a great amount of heartache. 
I had thought that girl would never again try to become an idol, but then, unexpectedly, she decided to try again here at Shining Productions. But she's not a sweet little girl anymore. Certainly the fans will take notice of that, and her popularity will be impacted. We're not too worried about that. While many idol fans say that the best age for an idol is 13 or 14, the market data shows that idol's power usually peaks in her early 20s. Aki-chan still got many years left in her prime. I certainly do not understand your concerns, though, and it, uh, I certainly do understand your concerns, though, and will take them into consideration in the days to come. In truth, this is a pivotal time for Aki's career. Given the recent developments in the industry, she really could become the next big thing. Even though Shining Productions may appear so small, please entrust us with your daughter. You have my word as a producer. I'll do my utmost uh, to make Aki into a star. But, ah, is that truly so, Producer-san? Hey, now. Uh, hey, now. <laughs> Let's back it up a bit. Oh, once again, Miss Kashiwaki leaned forward and held my hand. I am truly grateful you're here. Of course, Kashiwaki-san. I am Aki's producer, after all. Please, call me Yumiko. Oh, first name basis, huh? <laughs> ah, really then, Yumiko-san. The small woman smiled at me, but somehow her smile made me feel uncomfortable, because it's fake. Uh, to tell the truth. Oh, no, to tell the truth, it's been so... Yeah, there it is! I, I knew it was gonna come at some point! Is she trying to rope herself a man? <laughs> Even though it's fake, she's trying to get that moolah! Uh, to tell the truth, it's been so difficult raising Aki without my husband. Aki-chan did tell me that she'd hardly sees her father anymore. Honestly, he was such an obstinate man, refusing to allow his daughter to follow her dreams. He disagreed with Aki-chan becoming an idol? Yes. And that was the cause for your divorce. Unfortunately, we had a difference of opinion to, as to Aki's future. He was far too unambitious. He couldn't see the potential Aki had within her. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. Looking down on entertainers like that isn't so unbelievable, producers. Isn't it so unbelievable, producers, Han? I see. Pardon my intrusion to your private affairs. No, no. You're part of this family, too. Oh, I am I now. <laughs> it seems that like Aki's taken a great liking to you. She patted me on the shoulder. Hang in there, producer-san. Uh, of course. With a smile, she stood from the sofa. Okay. Then I must get going. Okay, she wasn't She wasn't gonna try to seduce me and fuck me to make, make Aki even better or something like that. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. <laughs> then I must get going. Remember, you're not alone in this. I want to see Aki shining on that stage just as much as you, producer-san. Let me know right away if you need assistance or if Aki's giving you trouble in any way. I'll set her straight. I understand. Then thank you for your work. Thank you. With that, she left the office. Without a long breath of air that had no idea I was holding, Aki's mother certainly was a handful in her own right, much like Aki. It was starting to understand where Aki got much of her mannerisms, like her mother. Uh... Her, uh, like daughter, like mother, like daughter, huh? But I now knew why she called us out this morning. It wasn't because she was worried that an older man was taking advantage of her daughter. It was so that she could begin to influence me, which in turn would give her power to control her daughter's career. Such was the business world. If I was oblivious to how shrewd men and women played this game, then I wouldn't have any right to call myself a Star Nova's producer. Kashiwagi Yumiko, Aki's mother, and a cunning woman in her own right. Just what role would she play in Aki's path to stardom? A strong, capable mother willing to do anything to make her daughter successful. Or... Oh boy, the chapter is called Mother, so... Ah, listen here, oh boy. <laughs> Let's see how this... To oh. What the hell? Ah. The entire membership of Quasar stood at attention, like a battalion of warriors at the ready. Nary a fortnight remained until their Budokan live. Given the stakes at hand, every one of the new, uh, one of one of the girls knew that this would be the decisive battle. If they fell here, then there would be no Ido Grand Prix. There would very well be no Quasar. They had trained around the clock. They had bled. They had suffered, all for a shot to reclaim their lost glory. The door to their dance studio flung open, 
and their center strode in. She stood at the head of the formation and addressed her fellow Valkyries. Everyone, the time has arrived. Our Budokan comeback live is finally upon us. Doubtlessly, you know this has been a difficult time for Quasar. The media continues to defame our name and that even as I speak now, our enemies muster their strength, hoping to dethrone us in the mo our moment of weakness. Look around you. Over half of the sisters we began with this year are now gone. That is the scope of the trial we now face. But it is during these times that we must demonstrate our strength. So let it be I who announces it first. The girls looked around in surprise at announcement. The next fan election will occur in two days after our Budokan Live. At last, the moment you've been waiting for. With so many new faces in the membership this year, who will come out on top? How will the face of Quasar change? You have all trained. You have all suffered, bled, for this moment. Now take your place among the stars. Dedicate yourself to becoming the very best, for the, this Budokan Live will be your opportunity to make your case to the fans. Fight, struggle, and carve out your name in this world, for it shall be your moment. Quasars, let us not forget, just around whom all the stars revolve, us, indeed. Let us show Tokyo that it is still Quasar at the center of the galaxy. Who are we? Greater and brighter than all else. The brighter, uh, the bright light at the center of the galaxy. All the stars revolve around us. Quasar! I'm going to do it. No matter what happens in the end, I'm going to aim to become the number one, too. <laughs> so the battle for the top begins. It looks like I'll have to get serious, too, from now on. After all, this is Quasar's great comeback. Demidro stared intently at his monitor. An enormous spreadsheet of numbers flew by in front of him, an incomprehensible jumble of money spent, money earned, money imagined, money invented, uh, invented, what? Money invented? Money promised, money allocated. Anyone would go mad trying to make sense of the data before him, but he stared through it all, reading through the madness with nothing but a calm detachment. The elevator chimed. It's old man Jones, isn't it? What is it? Oh no, it's Kamijo. Uh, <laughs> no, it's Shiro! I I looked at her text and said Kamijo, god damn it. Yeah, god damn it. Kamijo sama. The girls have been rallied as ordered. I see. Kamijo still kept his eyes on the screen. Then there is nothing more for us to discuss. Go forth and restore our place at the top of the industry. Um, will you be in attendance at our live, Kamijo sama? No. I'm far too busy dealing with the issue on our this end. In any matter, what does it matter? Please are shall perform impeccably, with or without my presence at the venue. I doubt you girls will dance and sing any better merely because I am present. The girls know this live will be different. They have a practice around the clock. You could say their very lives depend on the outcome of this live. Perhaps their morale will improve if they knew their producer took the time to... He raised his eye from the monitor to look at his center with annoyance. Are my quasars so weak as to flounder merely because I am not there? No. My apologies, kamicho sama Oh boy. Ah, this man mad! Ah, Kimicho stood from his chair and approached Shiro. A long time ago, I took a trip with my father to America to see how the entertainment business operates there. You see, in that country, things are quite different from Japan. In this country, when you fall, your family looks after you, the state looks after you, your friends look after you, your neighbors look after you. But in America, there is no safety net to catch you if you fall. It is the survival of the fittest. The strong are free to take advantage of the weak, and the weak are free to either accept their lot or band together until they overtake their competitors. And the cycle continues endlessly, leaving only broken people in its wake. When I saw this, I thought, isn't it such an entertaining thing to watch, to see men fight, scheme, betray, rise, and fall? You see, I enjoy every moment of thinking 
of it, thinking of ways to defeat my enemies, thinking of how I would emerge victorious. Once I realized I was free to see myself become the villain, I became capable of accomplishing things others could only dream of. At the pit of every man's heart is the lust to dominate, to see others shattered and our selfish desires met beyond our wildest imaginations. But to be hated, to be re revealed, it is immensely difficult thing for the average individual. A hefty price to pay to accomplish what we seek. When I first laid eyes upon you, I saw my own vision reflected in your eyes. And I knew I was not alone in this world. Is it so? Okuda Shiro, lead my girls. Deliver Quasar's victory. And your legacy shall be assured. Sir! Shiro walked away, back to the elevator. Perhaps she had always despised the man who had lorded over her life so long. Perhaps she had never seen her producer as anything more than a villain, the most foul. But this time, Shiro couldn't help but feel the need to say an additional word to the man who, regardless of her hatred for him, had sculpted her into the very woman she was today. Perhaps the desire for conquest can drive men to perform acts both terrible and great. But for women, the desire to be loved will always try trump the desire to win. Before Kamijo could respond, Shiro entered the elevator and closed the door behind her. Women are foolish creatures indeed. So easily taken advantage of. I'll never be one of them. Wait, 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 wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> I... Wait a minute! <laughs> I don't know if I interpreted that wrong. I probably did because I tired, but... There's like signs around this and I'm just wondering. I'm just thinking out loud now. Was Shiro a man? Ah! Well, she used to be a man? Like, because the way Kaori said it, it felt like a man looking at her rather than a woman. And now, the way she spoke there, that she'll never be one of them, you mean somebody who's, like, weak and desires love? Or... Uh, I don't know! I don't know if I interpreted that wrong, but... I mean, she either just meant she won't be like given to her girlish nature or she's just she used to be not Shiro but Hiro <laughs> God damn it I don't know we'll see uh, I don't I don't know what to interpret into that maybe maybe not I don't know we'll we'll fucking see um the girls sat in the sofa their eyes glued to their cells while they had spent every free moment in the past three months practicing tonight their attentions were diverted by something far more important Tonight, the first shot of the Great Ida War would be fired. Um, Quasar's Budokan Live would happen. The opposing force, once a mighty empire of the nation, the most beautiful girls had been embattled in a fierce sex scandal all season. It was imperative for the oh, pfft, I mean, hit that for them that they deliver a flawless performance here and restore their fans' confidence. On the other hand, if more trouble were to occur at the live, or if their fans failed to recognize the performance, then it would truly mean the power structure of the idol world would be rearranged tonight. The girls thralled through the social media for any signs of what's happening at the Imperial grounds right now. The tension's really high, isn't it? <laughs> Anyone else want some snacks or maybe a drink from the vending machines? Tasmi attempted to relax the others, uh, fell on deaf ears. So far, people aren't really saying anything about the norm, out of the norm. <sighs> You're probably going to be disappointed if you think Quasar's going to fall here. There's no way they're going to just roll over and let us win, you know. In fact, the pressure is just going to make them work four times harder. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, like, if, if it wasn't for the fact that Kaori saw her naked, I would think more of the... 
she's a guy uh well she's not a guy anymore she's a woman now but like uh, uh but i mean before is it possible that she got like the change or is uh, or is just what's being said kind of throwing out that vibe i don't know like i said we gotta see more to it because i probably misinterpreted what the elevator thing was about but hey i don't know it's just the only reason i thought that is because of what kaori said that it felt like a man looking at her the way she gazed at her but i don't know like, like it, 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 it's a spectacle and just compared with what she said in the elevator it kind of makes me think well did she be a guy? I don't know. Like, we'll see though. Like, that, that'd be some development. That'd be an eye opener. I'd be like, oh, damn, Chiro. Damn. You looking good. And he always, god damn it. But even, um, and in fact, the pressure is just going to make them work four times as hard. Put even a timid wolf up against the wall and it's going to bear its fangs at you and come at you like a mad dog. That's why you got to keep your. Alpacas close to the chicken coop. You never know when one of them coyotes will jump the fence and get you. But two or three packers around will straighten out your vermin problem split. Sorry. Yeah, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> Meanwhile, our Captain Twin Tails is merely sitting on the sofa with her arms crossed. Of course, Quasar is going to be doing everything in their power to make a comeback. But the problem is that you seriously never know what'll happen, or how the fans will react to something. You can train and plan all you want, but once you actually make your move, then just about anything could happen. <sighs> Anyways, let's not get too focused on this, everyone. It's not like this is our life, and shouldn't we be supporting Quasar and hoping all goes well for them as fellow idols? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Even though they work for a different company it's not like the girls over there have any different from us they're all working hard to accomplish their dreams too instead of hoping they mess up let's all give them our support but the other is merely face bomb sasumi you're so pure that it hurts <laughs> like god damn it i need to pat your head you're you're just too fucking pure <laughs> god damn it <laughs> Uh, I mean, in a sense, she has a point of not to wish them bad, because if you wish bad, bad will come to you, that kind of karma shite, so, you know. Ah, uh, as expected of the Lamas Star Nova, not understanding anything at stake. <sighs> like, I'd ever support those bitches. <sighs> Sasuchan, there's some things you'll never understand about this world. Oh. oh boy, meanwhile, the entire membership of Quasar was in makeup room, getting into uniform for the impending performance. Oh, uh, the atmosphere is totally different now. Usually I don't feel nervousness at all before taking to the stage, but this time I can feel my heart pounding in my throat. Will our fans cheer when we take the stage, or...? <laughs> You're getting the jitters, Kaorichi. Huh? It's been a long time since I felt this way. This line's going to be different from our other ones. Indeed. This time, we are truly fighting with our lives on the line, aren't we? But it's strange. Uh, what's strange? Lately, I've been missing a certain thing among the front row of girls. A certain thing? The one... Oh, I got it. Eh. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, oh, God. I wonder what ended up happening to that man's little pet project. Mayhap has been shuttered due to recent troubles. Oh yeah, I forgot about the robot. What happened to the robot? Oh, you're right. I haven't seen that robot around for a while now. People undoubtedly take note of Stella Silver's absence in this live. Not quite the image we wish to be presenting in, in times like this. <sighs> Even though it was weird to be dancing and singing alongside a robot, we really could use all the help we can get right now. There's only like three of you now, then. Hearing their discussion, Shiro finished putting on her makeup and turned to face the two. In regards to that, I saw something quite curious as I left the staff bus earlier. A hint as, a hint as to Stella Silver's disappearance. We were tailed by a white cargo truck on our way here, no. I presumed the truck was merely holding equipment for our life. But as I left the, our bus, I caught a glimpse of the truck cargo hold, and only saw a single steel box with it, just large enough to hold one, a person. Oh yeah? 
could that man have delivered to us a trump card? Or a trap? A, a trap? What do you mean, Shiro-senpai? That man does love his surprises. Huh? In any matter, us girls will perform as planned. No matter what happens, smile, and all shall be grand in the end. Understood. With 21 girls, the Quasar slid at attention in three rows. Shiro faced at the head of their formation, holding a flag staff bearing their emblem. Quasars, time has run out, and the moment has come. As we look upon each other's faces now, we may still have regrets in retros yeah, retrospection. We may still wish we had practiced for longer, or wish we had done something differently. But, put those doubts to rest, for I have led you here to this night. With these very hands, I shall carry each of you to your promised future, for I am Okida Shiro, your center. And what a glorious night it shall be when we reclaim our place as the great axis of the heavens. Our motto, Shiro pounded the base of her staff against the floor. Greater and brighter than all else, the light at the center of the galaxy. All the stars revolve around us. Quasar! Oh boy. The entire membership stamped their feet in perfect unison with Shiro's flagstaff. The stage rises. Everyone, let's go! The girls split into four echelons and knelt each group facing a different direction with Shiro standing at the center. Their platform elevated and delivered the girls to the center of Budokan. They were surrounded by all sides by the audience. Like four petals of flowers, each of the echelons rose while Shiro unfurled their banner. Welcome to our rebirth! Like a wave of adulation, the crowd was soaked into their bodies. Shiro Sama! That's the way. The audience, they want us to win. Oh boy. As the live was occurring, Kamija was in the, still in the middle of dispensing the mass numbers before him. Somewhere within the cac I know this word cacophony of oh, <laughs> figures lied the means to his survival. No, not merely his survival, but the preservation of all that he had built his entire life. However, scanning through the financial records of his entire company was no tall order. Even someone as talented as him couldn't help but feel all mounting frustration at the tendium of the task before him. Yet, the sensitive nature of this task meant that only he could entrust, be entrusted with it. But what he had discovered, uh, may discover in these files, it handled improperly, could instead herald certain doom for Golden Cat Productions. And he was not about to accidentally cause the unraveling of his company during his search for salvation. He had to focus, ignore the trifling matters around him, and yet the outcome of Budokan Live couldn't help but distract him from his task. In truth, he wished he could see them. This would be Quasar's grand comeback live. In spite of everything, he was swept away by the grandeur of his idols, the roar of the audience, the, uh, pagan tree. In truth, he wished to be a part of that world as well, but it was something he could never do. Oh, at such a pivotal juncture in Quasar's history, he couldn't help but reminisce. He had been, it had been his love for Quasar which had kept him going all these years. He had been betrayed, lied to, tricked, and he, in turn he would do the same. For that was merely how the game was played. From the very beginning, he had willingly given his soul to Quasar. Perhaps he was but a husk of a man now, but by his two hands he had breathed life into something which did not exist in this world until he had acted. How much of his blood it took to craft such a mighty thing. He did not need a heart in his chest, a quasar beat, uh, a quasar's heartbeat like a thundering war drum across the nation. Before him, he saw his greatest creation. Oh, who's Kana? Who, who, who are you? Kamijo-sama. Uh, wait, Kamijo-sama. Kam uh, did he make a robot of everyone? I'm uh, like, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Kamijo-sama. Yes, by his bloody hands, he had made great things. Or is, is this just his thoughts? He had to see them. Every fiber of... Who, who is this? The one on the left. Uh, 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 I don't... Like, well, who's the one on the left? I don't remember you. Every, I mean, she might be new, but I don't know. 
Every fiber of his being screaming to see his quasars vanish, uh, vanquish their enemies, and win the worship of the masses. Kamija put his computer to sleep and stood from his desk. The girls panted as their song finished. Their faces still looked in brilliant smiles. Locked. Uh, they jumped, giggled, and laughed as they waved their adoring fans, trying to appeal to each one of them. Korichi! Shirosama! Mako-chan! We can do it! The crowd is responding. We can win this! Without warning, the stage lights went dark. Red beams of light surrounded the stage, and the word announcement appeared on the enormous screen above them. Shiro merely chuckled to herself as the more junior members of the unit looked around in confusion. By now, a surprise announcement or two during the live had merely become old hat. As the stage relit, revealing Stella on the stage. Hi, Stella. Everyone, are you enjoying the live? Yeah! But were you wondering where I was? Stella! I had to go away for a bit for upgrades. But now, I think I can finally become a real girl. The opening notes of their next song began her hewing the girls to return to Fornation. Despite the unexpected appearance of their android compatriots, their training took over and the girls assembled into the lines with perfect unity. No matter what happens, I'll be with you forever. No matter the age, no matter the time, no matter who you are, made to appeal only to you, it's me, Stella Silver. Huh, so this is your big surprise, Kamijo. Ooh, stealing the spotlight like that? I gotta do my best. I can't break beneath a robot for crying out loud. So the scariest opponent of all has finally made her entrance. I bet... Uh, I best bring my A game. Let, um, you still have the lollipop in your mouth as you dance? <laughs> Lest the fans start believing that a real girl cannot match up against malfunctioned mo uh, robots. All around Stella, the other girls gritted their teeth and prepared themselves. You know, I just remembered something. What about Haruka? She said she was about to get them. Is she about to do something or not? Cause like, it's been a hot minute since we've seen her and if she wasn't gonna do anything, that little scene was kind of pointless, not gonna lie. But hey, uh, maybe she gotta do something. Maybe she gonna come to her life and shoot Shiro. I don't fucking know. God damn it. They were really fighting for their lives now. Immediately they understood the threat that this android posed to them. A mindless simulation of an idol who never aged. Who was that other girl? Uh, who was that? Never made mistakes and most importantly, never betrayed the fans. Trust. This was Quasar's answer to Enokita's scandal. There was no way the living girls of Quasar would fall to their own shadow. Ready? Gravit- Um, ready? Gravitate! Demetra gritted his teeth as he sat stuck in traffic. By now, the new model Stella Silver must have already been unveiled to the public. It's why this creation, yet so much work and money have been pouring into her speech and mannerisms more lifelike. Oh, so I guess giving her the Igus like voice wasn't really gonna work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh god, it would have been so much better if he had been on stage with her. A timeless idol who very well could send Quasar to the stars. His heart beat, uh, his heart beat again. In the end, he did the things he had to so that he could create the greatest show on this planet. What a stage it must be at Budokan right now. His empress, Sokuda Shiro, doubtlessly dueling her perfect challenger, Stella Silva. The other girl shouting and screaming, their arms outstretched to win the votes of the remaining undecided fans. The human condition encapsulated in a single shining moment. Finally, the light turned green and the traffic began to move once more. Kamijo stepped on the accelerator. Would he make it in time to see the final act of the live? He had to. He couldn't miss it for the world. Suddenly a white light blinded his peripheral vision. What? Oh, he's about to die. Yeah, before he could finish his exclamation, he was thrown from his seat when another car piled onto the side of his vehicle. His luxurious BMW like uh, bent like a can in two and screeched to a halt on the side of the road. Ah, uh, Kamijo died. Maria sighed as she turned off her cell. Judging from the buzz of the media, Quasar's life had been a blowout success. Already, users on Chipper were raving about how their faith in Quasar had been restored. 
By now, most of the comments once again returned to arguing about which girl's performance was the best. In other words, an Akita sex scandal had already been wiped from the public's memory. It's been a while, that's why. If it's if, if it was like, you know, a week after, then yeah, they probably get some flack, but it's been a quite a minute. <sighs> well, there you have it. It was way too naive to think that Quasar would go down so easily. I know firsthand that those girls will literally throw down their lives and make it to the top. Defeating them's not going to be anywhere that easy. Indeed, expecting Quasar's Budokan Live to be a bust may have merely been wishful thinking in our, pa in our part. Like I said, if Haruka just came in and started shooting up the show, then you guys would have been set. Like, that's a dark thought, but that's what I thought was going to happen. Like, there was that moment she's like, I'll get all of them, but she hasn't done shit as of yet. Like, what, 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 she, what was the point of that scene? She ain't going to do shit. I want to see some action. Haruka, you, you played my intention. Like, that. Uh, uh, my my what my expectations god damn it <laughs> i was expecting some crazy shit to go on during the live oh god indeed expecting quasars but yeah i said that oh, i guess that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes anyways it's not like anything's decided yet let's uh let's y'all do our best to make our boudicin a hit too well i told you guys that you were being unreasonable the, the enemy is quite powerful indeed Aki let out a long sigh. Well, Sasuchi's got a point. Anyway, it was really unreasonable to think the Grand Prix would be handed to us on a silver platter. Just because Quasar's won this battle doesn't mean the outcome of the war has been decided. We still got a, a shot to amaze our fans too. We gotta redouble our efforts, train even harder, interact with the fans on social media even more. This is where the battle gets serious, you know, from this point on. <laughs> our drill sergeant Loli's right. Instead of wishing for our rivals to take a tumble, let's all diligently do our part to become star idols. The others murmured their agreement. <laughs> oh, hiccups, Jesus. Well, looks like that's a wrap for tonight, then. Ah, the fight against Quasar really heated up. As your producer, I'm pretty excited to see how this story will unfold. I'll do my part to back you girls up, too. But as the girls were standing to leave, Julie suddenly shot to life. Holy shit! Hang on, guys, just hang on a second! What? Why? This just hit the Chan! Something's happened to Quasar! I it's Why? The girls of Quasar rushed out of the rear entrance of the venue as soon as their live concluded. In fact, none of them had even had the time to change out of their stage uniforms yet. What happened? Why are we leaving the venue in such a rush? Karichi. It's Gamijo san. He's been in an accident. No way! How serious! Oh god, Harry's heart sank when she saw the gray faces on Shiro and the rest of the staff members. Is he, is he dead? Uh, that's what we're heading out to find. Uh, heading out to find out right now. Come on, ladies, we're moving out. With that, the front row girls got into the staff member's car and rushed over to the accident site. Shiro ran out of the front seat of the car and entered the chaotic blue and red lit street corner, filled with the police officers and medical staff. She pushed past the police tape and saw Kamijo lying on a stretcher. Kamijo sama Relief came over her when he picked himself up and faced her, looking unharmed. Just stay away! But it was already too late. A firework of display of flash photography enveloped Shiro as a mob of paparazzi documented everything which was unfolding. Oh. That, there she is! There she is! Thank you! I, I, I was really gonna get mad that that whole development meant nothing! But there she is! There she is! Now what you gonna do, my girl? I wanna know! I've been waiting this whole time to see what your little thing was gonna unravel. I don't know if that's horrid of me, but you know, when someone says something like, I'll get them, you wonder what the hell's gonna happen, what you gonna do? And then just to be thrown out? But no, there, there we we go, Shiro Senpai. Nearly a pair of police officers had detained a crazed Haruka. Oh, she did it. I always knew you were fucking Kamijo kun, but it's me he loves more because I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win, you hear? Oh, he was always the better idol, you slut, traitor, harlot, bitch. Oh, oh Shiro gasped, her iron demeanor broken by the triad of insults flung by her former kohai. Microphones and cameras already here. 
uh, at the ready, the paparazzi lapped up every one of Haruka's insane accusations like sharks drawn to blood. What's going on? Why is Haruka senpai here? I mean, did she did she do it? Did she rush him? I, I, I maybe I don't know. What's all this commo- The more flashes erupted as the rest of the front row girls appeared on the scene. Kamijo could only groan as the disaster unfolded around him. Their brilliant comeback life now ruined by the return of this fool. Tomorrow the tabloids would be filled with nothing, uh, would not with the news of Quasar's comeback, but their next big scandal. What a fiasco. Oh, well, it's not really the the revenge I thought you would do, but uh, I thought she was got to go and like shoot. Shoo oh my God, this man! Ah, <laughs> what a creepy fuck! What humiliation is this? <sighs> Kamijo sat before the board of directors, fury bubbling in his gut. That bitch. If he had ever saw her again, he would murder her with his very hands. Oh! With Golden Cap Productions invested so much money, so much manpower, so much political capital hauled into making our summer Budokan live a success! Why are these he the headlines we are greeted with the morning of what was supposed to be our comeback? Oda slammed a handful of tabloids on the table. Secret lies in between former Quasar and Akita and her executive producer. Their heir golden calf fortune humiliated minutes after Quasar Budokan Live. Quasar center Okuda Shiro involved in love triangle? Kamijo could only clench his fists and contain the explosive furence raging within him. The reality before us is clear. Seichi Kamijo has become a liability to this company. While it shames me to say this, I motion a vote for the immediate removal of Kamijo-san as the executive producer of Quasar until a suitable replacement has been found. I shall act as Quasar's interim producer and abate this crisis. The second board member raised his hand and seconded the motion. Kamijo stood, his voice trembling with murder. So this was your plan all along? The theft of this company from my family? You may have been here the longest, Oda-san, but it was I, it was I who in act erected the very office you stand in right now! It was I who created the idol unit you lust after, all of it was through my hands! And it was only I who can save Golden Calf, me! Kamijo pounded his chest, his eyes wide in both confidence and madness. Oh no, perhaps our young master may have grown too accustomed to hearing the fawning of whispers of his idols. The other board members chuckled and looked at Kamijo with derision. In their eyes, he was but a young upstart who had merely used his familiar connections to secure his place as the producer of Quasar. Just an arrogant, self-indulgent heir spoiled by his father's riches. The motion has been seconded. All those in favor, raise your hands for the record. Before the vote could proceed, the elevator chime at Shiro. Isn't it? The board members gasped and kept their hands lowered as the door opened. Uh, Butler wielding Kamijo C. Oh no. Uh, I thought it would be Shiro. But no, Kamijo C, you're the old man! Ah, uh, the, the real head! Ah, uh, still clinging to life while it's connected to an iron lung behind him. Oh. Father. Kamijo, along with the rest of the board members, immediately stood and bowed. Good afternoon, Kamijo-sama. Now, gentlemen, now, now, gentlemen, I hear, I hear you folks are raising a fuss about my boy again. Oda bowed and assumed the position of the board spokesperson. Uh, forgive me, I merely intend to put the company in. When an ant picks a lion... What does it say to the kingdom if it, the lion responds in pain? Resurrecting the company now would only invite more chaos. Give the boy one more chance. The Grand Prix. Would have closed his eyes and bowed. In fact, uh, if that is what Kamijo-san desires, then I shall swallow my pride and do as you will. Good, good. I knew I could trust you. Oda, to take the uh, to make the right choice, then. Uh, Kamijo Senior's butler slowly wheeled the dying elder back into the elevator. His eyes rested solely on his son as the elevator closed before him. 
Don't let me down. Oda barely managing to mask his displeasure turned to the board members. I rescind my motion. Then let us see how our young master performs at the Grand Prix. Shall we, gentlemen? With that, uh, the board members stood and fill, uh, filed out of Kamijo's office as well. Oh boy, well, this has been quite the... The, the few days for them. It seems like, yeah, quite honestly, it feels like we're getting more Quasar's drama than our own. Like, I feel like I'm looking at Quasar's whole story here. Like, everybody else is doing like all that other stuff, but then, then there's this. But like, I think what I can tell from, um, from the whole thing with uh, Shiro just now, that it wasn't my prior thought. She, she's not a man. She, she, she's just a girl in love who doesn't want to give in to those feelings, I suppose. <laughs> Cause this pretty much confirms that she broke down when she saw her man's hurt. <laughs> Anyways, Kamijo sat at his desk by himself. He had this uh, debacle. How had this debacle occurred? Had Oda set everything up? Was Haruka in cahoots with that old Tanuki? Had everything been a scheme by Oda to take Quasar away from him? And now, how would he once again restore the public's confidence? Shit! He tossed away his pen in fury. It towed along the floor and came to a stop at Shiro's foot. Ah, you were there. Shiro knelt down and picked up his pen. Are you well enough to be working? Yeah. Have you come to laugh at me as well? Doubtlessly, it must give you, of all people, the most satisfaction to see me in this position. No. Why? I make your life miserable. I've taken away your friends. I've taken away your life. And yet, you've given me something. Ahem. <laughs> The girls of Quasar have all willingly given up their lives to wear our uniform. From the moment we were in, uh, inducted to the main membership, each of us knew what we were getting into. It is true, though. Sometimes we hate each other. Sometimes we stay up late, unable to sleep because we are too busy conjuring up new and novel ways of killing each other in our minds. But in the end, we are all members of Quasar. Even you. One big miserable family, huh? But a family nonetheless. <clears throat> At Shiro's signal, the rest of the girls appeared from behind the various pieces of furniture in the office. What? When did you? I was quite amazed myself. Truly, the board meeting must have been dire if you failed to notice the entire membership of Quasar walk into your office. Kamijo san, everyone's just bad mouthing us on the net. Even though, even though our live was such a big success, it's like everyone has a memory of a goldfish. Karichi, you mustn't embarrass yourself in front of our producer. But... I'm already chirping messages to our supporters to rally behind us as I stand. Uh, according to my analysis, most of the hate being leveled against us are, at the moment likely comes from bots written by rival production companies. Kimijo couldn't help but chuckle at the sight of his girls. You all... You do not hate me. Kimijo-sama. In the life of a pro idol, we learn to put aside our personal feelings and instead devote ourselves to our unit. Perhaps we may all hate each other, but we are united in one and our love for Quasar. That is perhaps the greatest bond we will treasure, ever treasure in our lives. <laughs> That is so. The bright center of the galaxy around which all the stars revolve. Quasar shall not fall so easily. We still have the results of the fan election. We can use that to restore buzz on social media and then... Actually, I have decided to temporarily suspend the fan election. Why? Mijo turned around, making his face... Uh, masking his face in the Quasars. Perhaps... That formula has now grown stale. We march to Odaiba. All of us united as quasars. The girls exchange relieved smiles. Of course, Kimijo-sama. We will all rely, uh, relay your new decision to all of our fans at once, then. 
With that, Shiro ushered the girls out of his office. Like, really, I feel like I'm learning Quasar story more than Aki's. Like, they they have such the... I didn't think they get such the death in Aki's story. I thought that would be something that happened in, like, Maria's story. But, no, Aki's story is getting all the Quasar lore. <laughs> Aki kept shouting to the other girls as they went through the routine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, Chunichan, pick up the pace. Hone-sama, you're slouching your back again! One, two, three, four! Oh boy. The girls collapsed in a heap as soon as her routine ended. Water... I can't believe this sight. Wiped out already? It's hardly at just 11 o'clock, you know! Aki-chan... This really might be overdoing it, you know. If we keep practicing like this, then we're going to be too tired to perform the actual live. It's only expected. This kind of devotion is what it takes to become a top idol. As your center, I won't accept it. We've all... And her exhaustion, even Aki ran out of breath mid-sentence. Aki-chan, you're really pushing yourself too far. But this way, what if you end up hurting yourself? We've got to do this. This is our moment. Quasar's troubles are one in a million gift from the gods. Most people won't get an opportunity like this even once in their entire life. 99.99% of idols work their asses off to the point of crying into their pillow every night and still never become renowned. All because they don't have the final quality required to be the top idol. Dumb, stupid luck. But us. We finally have Lady Luck in our corner. If we don't give it our best here, then we'll... Uh, be all betrayed to struggling idols everywhere. If we're going to defeat Quasar, then we all have to do it together. As your center, I can't give up. Lucky chan <sighs> Despite her body aching all over, Maria pulled herself back up. Come on, everyone. Every member of uh, Quasar in their dance studio right now practicing the night away. If our routine isn't perfect, then we'll never pull it off. We'll never become number one. And in the end, the victor of this battle will be the most prepared idol unit. Hmm. The others murmured their assent. Come on, y'all. This level of exercise ain't nothing. Natan, Natan wants to give her all. She ain't gonna go home until she enter through the door with her back straight and a loud, I've returned. Indeed, it would truly be unacceptable if Nemo Nemo were to fall here after everything we've been through. I've got to show Haruna-san, after all, just how high Star Nova can go. <sighs> you guys really are going to do this. Uh, this one cannot say her heart is fully prepared yet. After all, it sounds impossible becoming the number one idol group in the country. But maybe just being the top ten would be amazing, wouldn't it? Aki, duh. Aki-chan, it's good to try your best and all. But this really, uh, but is this really the right way to become the number one? Yes. <laughs> At this rate, you might lose something important about yourself, you know? It's all right for a girl like you to be selfish every now and then. Do you really have to commit your whole life to becoming the number one? What about your own happiness? I'm your center. Star Nova is my responsibility. When I said I was destined to become the center last year, I wasn't joking. I already knew from the very beginning just how heavy this duty would be. Being the center isn't about getting the most attention. It isn't about getting the most money. It's a chain wrapped around your neck, a heavy burden to carry. But I'll do it. I'll carry all of you, your dreams in my chest. Even though I'm the smallest one here, I'll do it. I'll make Star Nova into the greatest auto unit of all time. Aki-chan! Tears ran down Sasami's face. And then I'll be dancing by your side, trying to lift just a tiny bit of the weight off your shoulders. Yeah. Maria put her hand on Aki's shoulder. Ha! Huh, what are you doing trying to look all cool? I'm still the most senior member of the unit, you know. And I'm the one who needs to defeat Quasar the most of all here. You got my backing. Let's do it together. <sighs> uh, I guess I've got no choice then. Oh well, it's not like I particularly want to be second place either. 
Don't get the wrong idea, though. I'm only doing this so that I've got a shot at becoming the center next year. Heh, <laughs> you better watch your back, you shit lowly, because Watanabe Julie is right behind you. Yeah, yeah, top tsundere, bitch. Huh. <laughs> then, this one shall pay her debt to the Red Imp as well. Maybe after this is all over, you can become over to my place again and we can play some games together. <laughs> Only if you clean up the disaster zone of a room first. <laughs> so those two hang out on the low? I didn't know. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> we truly are. We truly are a family at Star Nova, aren't we? Hell yeah. Of course. Ah, uh, my urges. Then let's do it. Let's defeat Quasar and take the first place prize at the Grand Prix this year. Oh! Another thing is, this chapter was called Mother, but we haven't really run into the problems with her mother that much. It's been like every now and then. Where is the mother drama? <laughs> why why have we been getting Quasar drama? We got more Quasar drama than the mama drama. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it's fine looking into Quasar's thing, but they're, they're going through a lot more drama than Aki's story so far. Like, right off the bat, we started with uh, Julie's drama, so this is just an interesting take on things. Outside the glass door of the dance studio, I couldn't help but smile with pride as I watched the girls talking among each other. Well, I intended to walk downstairs to give a pep talk of my own. I saw that Aki already had everything well under control. In the end, the girls at Star Nova loved each other. It was a bond far stronger than anything else, even the love a girl could feel for a man. They had struggled through hell and back, side by side as sisters. It looked like my presence here was entirely unnecessary. Before anyone could notice me standing outside the door, I went back upstairs and returned to work. Just a week remained until our booty can live. With Quasar distracted by the latest scandal, this would be the opportunity to seize the public's attention at Summer's doorstep. If we scored a decisive victory here, then we really were in a position to win all, uh, win it all, the t Idol Grand Prix. Oh god, Hiccup. Such an event would be a war sh watershed moment for the Idol industry. The climatic confirmation of Quasar's stunning fall from grace and the ascendance of the unlikeliest group of girls to top the entertainment world. But could such a wondrous thing actually come to pass? While on television, ah, television and anime, idol stories always ended happily ever after. And in reality, the vast majority of idols never made it anywhere. Indeed, it was only natural that a sea of hundreds of thousands of idols, all trying to make it big, the most idols were disappointed in the end. As we approached our greatest stage yet, the first warning sign that all of us uh, that all was not as well as it appeared struck. What? What happened? What? what what's going on? What's going on? The, the first warning sign. What's going on? Uh, oh, oh, no. Well, we'll find out next time, because we're pretty much at the hour. Ah, uh, dicks, fuck you, cliffhanger. Oh, well, but... Thank you all for watching. If you like this, hit the thumbs up button and say with your favorites. Also, share with your friends. It's a big connection. You can follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description below. I'm going to record and go see what happens. Ha! You have to wait. <laughs> God damn it, buddy. Anyways, yeah, we'll find out soon enough what the hell is the warning sign. But thank you all for watching. I love you all. See you all in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.